Laura Everingham Scammon was an American writer and suffragette. Born as Laura Patience Everingham in Ira, New York in 1844, the daughter of Baptist preacher John Stoughton Everingham and Jane Maria Cowles. In 1875, she married Kansas lawyer James Scammon, the pair having two children. In 1878, she organized a social club in Kansas, serving for four years as president of the Kansas Social Science Federation. In 1898, she became a lady commissioner for the Trans-Mississippi and International Exposition, a World's Fair held at Omaha. She knew writer, poet, amateur historian, and ethnographer John Nason Nehart, reading to him as a child such that he felt the Odyssey and Iliad come alive during her retelling. She died in 1929 in Leavenworth, Kansas. She supposedly wrote books and stories for the American children's magazine Youth's Companion, but I only know of two books she wrote, both released in 1894. The first is Bettine, a short story of a woman with fleeting fancies for a large series of lovers who is tragically affected by a shipwreck. The other is today's subject, the ghost novella Spoon River Dan. The book begins by describing Spoon River, a locality that is, according to the author, so utterly irrelevant only those who live there seem to have any knowledge of its existence. The people living aside the sometimes quiet, sometimes turbulent river are described as stolid, strong, and dull of intellect. We then have the title character described to us in these illustrious terms. Dan, like his brethren, was ignorant, drunken, and profane. Yet he has certain abilities as a healer, such as healing by laying on his two-fingered, deformed hand, or via a certain mental process known only to himself. People come twenty miles or more to use his services, especially his ability to simply pluck out an aching tooth without pain or blood spilling. The book begins in fact with Dan in a drunken reverie, abusing his horses as he drives his wagon. But he has to pass a very rough, dangerous pass, where any failure would launch his wagon over the side, to a swift accelerated rolling doom. When he somehow gets home, his wife berating him for being drunk, he insults her while alluding to having seen something on the road. This, he says, was a ghost dog, but he was too frightened to investigate it more thoroughly. The dog itself had been seen by everyone else in the vicinity, even pursuing and pardon the pun hounding a young lad who went a-courting. Now Dan gets to work to try and find out what the dog actually is, with all Spoon River demanding him do so, since they consider his unpaid miracle working makes him deserve the dubious honour. He is still sceptical, however, and assumes that it's a case of a rejected suitor avenging himself in some fashion. He suspects Ab Stewers, whom Polly Brown laughed at when he took a trip and hung himself from his clothes via a hook, and had to be pulled down from the roof. He gets a hound and goes about hunting for the fake ghost, but has no success, taking out his anger on his family and anyone who gets in his way. What is worse, he gets so overwhelmed by more and more patience that he no longer has time for proper food or sleep, and still does this for no reward at all. And of course he drinks more than ever in consequence. One night during a sudden snowstorm, Dan is driving his wagon, drunk and freezing. Then he sees it, the ghost dog, staring at him through the snow. He throws his jug at it and pursues it with whip in hand, following it on and on until he and the hound find themselves entangled, strangled and frozen side by side within the branches of a mighty elm, their bodies covered over by a coat of snow long before anyone thinks to go searching for Dan. The story is grim enough though it may not have any real ghost in it. It is slightly odd but worth a quick perusal.